I think we have a great suite of solutions, uh, you know, across Microsoft and Veritas. And I think we've had multiple years of collaboration between these two companies, helping enterprise customers, you know, large Fortune 500 enterprises, but also enterprises that are distributed across various industry verticals, you know, protect their data, manage their data, secure it uh, for, for the right business outcomes and for moving their business forward with the power of data. Um, you know, this essentially is a summary of why we are better together, you know, when it comes to, you know, protecting the Microsoft infrastructure with Veritas and a, a range of capabilities um, you know, that, that are essentially offered through this partnership to our customers. I would definitely you know, turn this over to Dawood as well to add in his thoughts um, as we kick this off together. Dawood? Yeah, so uh, thanks. Um, I just want to mention that Microsoft and Veritas have had a long and rich history of collaboration across our different platforms. And we have been integrating with uh, the Microsoft platform, whether that was on-prem or as they transitioned into a, a hyperscaler uh, with, with Azure. And it's been a, a, a really interesting journey as we both tried to evolve and gone, you know, we, we've both been around for over 30, 30 some odd years, and we both had to evolve and move forward uh, and taking on new workloads while supporting our customers on existing workloads. So that's really important is that uh, between Microsoft and Veritas, we solve for the most complex and difficult problems that our customers experience. This is something that we hear from time to time, and I'd like to get your take on. Uh, everybody talks about the shared responsibility model. What does that really mean? Because that's really the kind of the crux of of, uh, of what we need to address as we move forward in the cloud. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, shared responsibility is something that has also evolved as customers have taken advantage of, of cloud workloads, of cloud infrastructure. Uh, and it's it really is an evolution of what customers are responsible for when it comes to their infrastructure, you know, their security, their data. And, and if you notice, you know, what, what this slide is trying to say is that, you know, when you are on premises, um, pretty much the entire stack of, of responsibility across data security, infrastructure, hardware and software is, is on our customers, right? Um, but as you sort of, you know, transition to the cloud, you're typically sort of going from, you know, a pre-provisioned model of having hardware, software, data and security, to a more of an offloaded pay-as-you-go model where you're renting infrastructure from the cloud. And as that happens, a lot of that infrastructure is now managed by your cloud provider. Um, and that sort of elevates your role as, as an IT pro because then you can focus on moving the business forward by adopting new technologies. Uh, but while you do that, your biggest asset that essentially you own is your data. And I think that's the core sort of um, you know, message here, which is, you know, despite the shared responsibility, the onus of managing, the onus of updating, the onus of essentially protecting and securing the data that, that your organization depends on is completely up to the customer. Um, and what that means is that we, it is essentially our way of giving that control to customers to govern where their data is, how their data is accessed, and how it is secured and protected. Um, and therefore, the administration of those responsibilities is also with the customer. And that creates a very interesting situation where, you know, we give the platform from the perspective of Azure uh, for customers to host a range of applications across infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, or SaaS, such as M365. But then the ownership of the data is still with the customer. You own the encryption keys, you own the platform, um, you know, where your data is hosted, how it's accessed, you own the role-based access controls, and you also own the administration around protecting it. And, and that essentially creates, you you know, a very interesting opportunity for customers to govern, you know, how they want to protect this data. What compliance regulations do they need to meet? How long do they need to retain it? And so on and so forth. And I think, you know, that is a great sort of, um, you know, opportunity for us two companies, Veritas and Microsoft, to come together to give customers a consolidated set of tools um, and interfaces that allows you to manage your data across your entire digital estate, whether it's on-premises, in the cloud in Azure or SaaS, um, such as in a platform like Microsoft 365. Um, I would definitely turn this over to Dawood as well to add any additional thoughts uh, as it comes to shared responsibility. 
Yeah, and uh, thank you so much. Yeah, shared responsibility is, uh, you, you pretty well co uh, covered it, but uh, just to emphasize, the customer owns access to their data. They own the encryption keys. That's really important uh, from, from a Veritas perspective because the customer manages that top entire environment. And so if they have sovereign requirements, they can manage those aspects of that, of, of whether it's cloud storage or instantiated servers in the cloud. So that's really important. And what we're trying to drive towards is this shared responsibility model and helping the customer understand exactly what they're responsible for. So, Darren, why don't you go ahead and take control of it and uh, uh -huh. show us uh, your stuff? <laughs> Thanks, Dave. So, uh, we talked with uh, about Veritas, and the Veritas platform uh, has been around a a long time. Whether that is uh, for completely on-prem solutions, uh, net backup, and InfoScale. As it's evolved over a, a good, goodly number of years into SaaS type of protection, and then uh, 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 storage as a service with uh, NetBack Recovery Vault, which is what the primary focus of my conversation will be today, and then and then Flex Scale, a scale out on-prem cloud type of solution that allows you to integrate to the Azure platform and manage your backup environment on-prem in a scale out type of model. So what I wanted to talk about today is Net Backup Recovery Vault. And Net Backup Recovery Vault is a cloud storage as a service solution. We introduced this about a year or so ago, a little shy of a year ago. And the idea was for many of our customers who are starting to migrate into the cloud to give them an easy way of moving forward and managing while at the same time protecting their backup data, the keys to their kingdom, the golden copy of their data, so that they can move off tape or actually use the recovery vault as a disaster recovery site or some sort of tertiary storage out there and provide them with the ability to have cloud storage built within a Veritas tenant securely provisioned in net backup. So we offer a uh, virtual air gap or what I like to call is control isolation take advantage of the immutability support that Azure provides today, whether that's compliance or enterprise, uh, offering a subscription-based model that allows you to recover your data either on back to on-prem or uh, in a instantiated environment in the cloud. So this also, as part of this, we've, uh, run into customer situations. We talked to a lot of customers when we were designing this, and some of the challenges that they experienced was not only they wanted a separate air-gapped storage solution in the cloud that uh, took advantage of RBAC essentially behind the net backup security envelope, but also they wanted to uh, have no surprises in their cost models. So we've included into the recovery vault uh, data transfers, uh, ingress and egress costs associated with touching the data and moving the data, especially for disaster recovery environments. And so that this offers some level of predictable costs. It is a subscription solution of one or three years, although they can be stacked. And it's based on backend terabytes. It's based on the terabytes that have run through the net backup deduplication engine. So it's just a fraction of your data. So when you start thinking about things like uh, uh, long-term recovery, so if you wanna move, start to move off of tape and take advantage of all the features and functionality that the Azure storage platform offers, the 11.9s, the immutability, the high speed of recovery, so you don't have to go ask and 
uh, get tapes from off site and bring them back in to recover. And we see that uh, uh, in terms of compliance and regulatory requirement, we're seeing more and more regulators start to push their customers or their, 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 the, the customers they're responsible for towards doing something instead of tape, something faster. Because if you're hit with ransomware, recovery is key. So why rec recovery vault? I mean, what, what did we, what were we thinking when we talked about that? So we mentioned a little bit about ransomware protection. So the idea of having it built in a Veritas tenant really managed by the backup and security administrators. So there's not a lot of people touching the environment. It's very, very isolated and it keeps that data safe. Operational simplification, we wanted to make it easy. It's fully integrated into the net backup UI. You can take advantage and create uh, buckets within the net backup UI once we provision the storage for you. And at that point, you can tier storage or tier data rather off into the, uh, into the recovery vault. I mentioned predictable costs. Uh, that we uh, take the sort of the bumps out of the road. We, we, we reduce those costs and absorb those ingress and egress uh, charges. And then it's built for data protection. It is part of our deduplication technology, our MSDP and our MSDPC, which allows you to take data. It's already compressed. It's encrypted in flight, encrypted at rest. It can take advantage of express route to deliver the data into the net backup uh, recovery vault. And it's a single SKU that will take advantage of, uh, make it easier for you to, to acquire. So the support experience and the, the move from CapEx to OpEx is uh, very easily transitioned. So it's a very uh, uh, robust and uh, interesting solution, I think. It solves a lot of issues for customers, especially around the idea of the ability to recover from the recovery vault. Because our deduplication technology is, is what's called self-describing, we can literally set up a net backup environment in the cloud, extract the meaningful metadata in the event that you have a ransomware event, and then move that data to the cloud to another location in the cloud, another tenant, or in fact move it back to on-prem. So Recovery Vault is a very robust and uh, uh, complete solution. Uh, we're continuing to add into it, uh, locking it down and making it more secure. Uh, there are a lot of new features coming in with Recovery Vault, and uh, yeah, so that that's pretty much what we were thinking about when we started to design this. Easy cloud storage based on the Azure platform. So I just want to take a minute uh, because I wanted to talk about NSP or Net Backup SaaS Protection. Ch addresses a lot of challenges associated with in the the uh, in the uh, shared responsibility model, the ability to make sure that you're backing up those critical assets like Google Drive, Gmail, Docs, Sheets, Slides, Stackbox, all of these SaaS features out there, in many cases, need to be backed up. Need to be uh, make sure that you are protecting that data. Tactical communications in the event of a ransomware environment is key to moving forward. It's one thing to say, I can get the data back, but if you can't communicate uh, with the uh, other teams, uh, it becomes a bit of a problem. So with this, we allow you to make sure that all of that history, all of that uh, uh, um, uh, data is backed up and uh, fully recoverable. So it 
scales to petabyte storage, uh, as you might uh, consider any any cloud based uh, SaaS solution. It offers very flexible recovery from folders to mailboxes, very granular types of recovery. Uh, offers ransomware protection. Every customer gets their own tenant. So there is no noisy neighbor aspect going on. And it offers powerful search and discovery right inside the product. So, and it's very, very easy to deploy. So the point is, is that Veritas has two, uh, well, they have more, but two that I'm uh, uh, working on. Uh, NSP and Recovery Vault as we transition into as a service kinds of offering for many of our products. So with that said, I want to talk just a little about last known good automated recovery at scale with Recovery Vault and NSP. We allow you to create tremendous recovery at scale. Recovery Vault is tied into um, our uh, orchestration technology as part of the base net backup solution that allows you to uh, orchestrate and create a runbook so that you can recover in the event of a malware environment, you know, malware scare or a, a ransomware scare, the ability to recover uh, effectively and not all recovery it's not all one size fits all. Recovery is can be complicated in many cases. And depending on what is necessary for that application is what we allow you to recover. You may want to do bare metal recovery. You may want to recover in the cloud. You may have to pull data from tape for, for those who are still on tape. Or you may pull data from some sort of tertiary on store on on plat on prem uh, storage. So we give you this ability to do instant rollbacks, cloud recovery, granular file recovery, bare metal recovery. What is necessary for that application at that unique time in the event that you're hit with ransomware? So I doubt, so I, I don't know if you're responding. In the chat, we did get a couple of questions that I thought maybe you could address. One of them is, um, someone asked, I'm trying to look at the name, but, oh, uh, uh, Alfredo wanted to know if you, you know, how long does it take to recover? Uh, of course, that all, that's one of those massive, it all depends kinds of questions, but. It is. Uh, we, but did, uh, you did address it. We do recover at scale, so it's not like you're having to spin up a bunch of single instance recoveries. You can actually fire off a recovery at scale. Yeah, you'd be surprised how quick uh, Cloud Recovery Server in, the, in, in Recovery Vault allows you to quickly recover, extract that metadata uh, that allows you to rebuild the NetBack uh, primary and, and media server. So recovery can begin pretty fast fast uh, as 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 a rule of thumb. But to your point, Dave, it, it sort of depends. I saw there was another question in there around, um, uh, I think it was around, uh, can Recovery Vault be acquired or NSP be acquired through uh, the uh, Azure marketplace? And yes, it can, private or public offerings. And the beauty of that is that once you acquire through the marketplace, uh, you can, uh, in, in some cases, you can buy down your MAC agreement or you can reduce your MAC obligation based on the storage you're using on the Azure platform, for example, uh, using with Recovery Vault. Uh, what yeah, else? Just, just, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead Rob. No, yeah, no, no, no. yeah, I was just gonna, I was just gonna maybe add one more point to what David was talking about as uh, with regards to the ransomware incident recovery. Uh, one of the things that we've taken care of from an architectural standpoint is to make sure there is as much 
parallel processing, parallel reads happening. You know, blob storage, in fact, does have, you know, extremely high performance guarantees in terms of read, write, and IOPS. Uh, and that comes in very handy, Alfredo, in terms of, you know, ensuring there is parallel sort of reads happening and recovery happens at a faster rate. Uh, now, depending on where you are recovering, if you're recovering back to on-premises, you would be sort of, you know, dependent on your network latency and bandwidth, but you do have the option to, as Dawood was talking about, these backups are self-describing. You can essentially uh, ensure that you, pro you know, provision an instance of net backup within the Azure platform and recover those backups into Azure in, a, in an isolated recovery environment, if you will, uh, not only giving you access quickly to your data, but also allowing you to perform forensics on that data in a platform or infrastructure which doesn't necessarily need any capex um, to be able to provision and deploy. So just wanted to add that in. Yeah. And we we find especially as we we add in things like malware scanning into the recovery vault and various other aspects, anomaly detection and a lot of uh, uh, ML and uh, AI associated with that. Um, the thing to understand about net backup is this this is your in many cases your last line of defense against ransomware uh backup solutions are being specifically targeted by uh, uh nefarious people out there and it's important to make sure that your net backup environment is is solidly protected but it also is important to be able to make sure that you're not deleting. We don't want to take responsibility. Remember, it's your data. So if we identify a malware event or something along those lines, we're not going to delete that data. We are going to let you know, and we can integrate with Microsoft Sentinel to let your Simmons or your, your security team know that we have found an event that they for one reason or another, depending on the signatures that have been downloaded at the time from Microsoft Defender, it may be that they in fact uh, want to do forensics on this particular piece of malware. So it gives them insight into where they may have to look beyond uh, in the environment. So there's a lot of things associated with security now and working with Microsoft and all of their tools you know, today, at the, uh, Microsoft is the biggest, largest purveyor of security solutions, security platform in the industry. And uh, integrating with them tightly is really one of the things that we find will help us moving forward to make sure we're wor working hand in hand around a security and make sure your, your data is secure. Very well said, Dawood. And I think the point that I would add back from a Veritas perspective is, you know, we've taken a lot of care in terms of architecting net backup recovery vault in a secure fashion. I think Dawood talked about the fact that the data is immutable. Um, but I think if you go back to the shared responsibility model, you would notice that identity, which is essentially at the core of security, is uh, again shared between you know the cloud provider and you as an enterprise customer, right? Um, what recovery vault fundamentally does is to basically create an identity boundary as well. So if you're protecting workloads in the cloud or you're provisioning your own storage accounts, let's say in Azure, to be able to back up, you're relying on the same identity that the rest of your organization is relying on. The virtual air gap that Dawood was talking about is, is fundamental from an identity perspective where your data is managed by the owners of that data, but your backups are essentially managed by your administrators who essentially are using this fully managed infrastructure, which is air gapped from that production environment, separated in terms of identity. And therefore, any nefarious or malicious insider or external actor cannot get to those backups um, you know, and attack them, as Dawood was talking about, is a recent, you know, highly sophisticated trend that you would see with pretty much any ransomware strain. Hey, Dawood, if you get to if someone were to ask you what do we typically see as a dedupe rate? What would you say? Well, I think it sort of depends on the data because if the data has been encrypted, uh, say it, say at a database level, you're not going to see tremendous amount of dedupe. But unstructured data typically is not, and uh, we see probably as much as 98% in some cases. So, uh, if I had to, to put a, a, you know, just kind of a uh, I'll take a swag. I would say anywhere between uh, 
uh, 94 and 98 percent dedupe rates. So we have a very, very we've been working on deduplication technology for an awfully long time, and we have a very, very sophisticated set of algorithms to do deduplication. And remember, object storage deduplication is a little different than block storage deduplication. And so uh, you, we get uh, pretty darn good uh, object storage deduplication also so which really uh, further reduces your costs and really in fact uh, reduces in many cases uh, you know we're, we're, we're all talking about climate change these days but your car climate footprint or your carbon footprint can be reduced through the efficiency of our deduplication and Microsoft's sophisticated blob storage so these are all uh, additional things that uh, uh, integration between uh, net backup and uh, Microsoft provide. And I could not agree more, Dawood. I think you know you talked about the deduplication aspect. Our customers, our joint customers, absolutely love that because, to your point, it reduces you know the amount of uh, you know footprint in terms of data, in terms of carbon, if you will, from a sustainability perspective. But more importantly, I think it gives customers a very, very good cost outcome, which is so critical in in the macroeconomic times that we are in, where you're really optimizing for how much is your cloud spend, how much is your infrastructure spend. So this is something that we absolutely you know. Uh, value this partnership for because you know it has delivered some interesting and very very important cost effective outcomes for our joint customers. Um, also on the blob storage side, which is the underlying platform under recovery vault, when we create you know replication, we obviously guarantee three copies of your data. Whenever you write any byte of data to blob storage, it automatically ends up creating three copies. We in fact erase and encode these copies as well to ensure that customers don't have to spend for three copies. They're essentially spending for erasure encoded, compressed set of copies which are available for recovery. And the moment a copy goes down, let's say due to you know a failure, which is which is absolutely common. We wouldn't say that we are airtight when it comes to failures. We need to build for resiliency. We absolutely make sure that the resiliency is built in at the most effective cost point and the most effective economic and environmental footprint standpoint. So I think that has been uh, the core of this partnership as well. We absolutely always try to optimize how much our customers you know, can take advantage of doing more with less. If you attended the keynote, that's the mantra that we absolutely believe in together uh, in this partnership, which is how do we help our customers do more? And I think this slide that uh, you know, Dawood is projecting right now is just an example of the amazing set of capabilities across recovery, analytics and insights and cyber resiliency, which the Veritas and Microsoft teams are investing together on the NetBackup platform.